is taking many games. Uh, for those who want it, uh, I have uh, two map codes for free license uh, to unlock the professional version. Uh, it, it, it by default has a, a free light version that doesn't include some of the advanced versions. Uh, so look at you unlock and you can use the whole world in one uh, at the uh, at the game today. So this weekend. Uh, so I want to kind of give a brief overview about what a game program looks like. Uh, this is probably typical common. I don't know if this is universal, but uh, usually a game program consists of a current game state, uh, which is all your data uh, that represents the state of the game, what, what the score is, where your player is on the screen, what your inventory is, all that kind of information for the game state. And then you have game logic, which is the rules of the game, the rules that the program uh, operates by to update that game state each uh, fraction of a second. So uh, there's a, a big loop that goes on that controls the game. And it's basically what you see there. It's like while the game is still running, or while the game is not over, uh, it applies the game logic to the current game state and generates the next game state. And so this happens typically 30 times, 60 times, 120 times over, very, very rapidly uh, per second. Um, and so you have to train yourself to think in terms of these uh, programs that you're writing on, uh, basically executing uh, to generate the very next step in the game in, a, in that long time. So uh, this will throw people up at first because they think, well, I want to have my guy go from point A to what you want to be, to what you want to see, to the final destination B, and I'll write a loop that does like a well not at destination update uh, position incrementally closer to, and then all that executes in one step. And so in, in one thirtieth of a second, you actually move the guy from all those positions, but the game doesn't update the screen until the end of the, the game uh, main loop executes, and that while loop is all rolled up inside of the main loop. So in one frame of animation, you're here, the next animation, you're here, and the player doesn't actually see all the intermediate. So you have to be uh, cognizant of that. Uh, I'll just get right into Game Maker uh, and talk about uh, the, the very first fundamental uh, in Game Maker. Uh, I want to switch over to the uh, 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 switch over to the game maker interface, uh, and uh, this is the the program that's running. Um, over on the left hand side, side, we have uh, what we call a resource tree, and these are all the things in your game that uh, you can build and then use building blocks to make it. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is the room. And the room is basically a place where stuff happens in the game. So I'm going to create a room right now. And I'm going to rename it. Uh, and this is just a, a, an empty space. So now that we have a game room created, uh, if I run this, this is the, the simplest game that could possibly be just a game maker. It's not really a game, it's just, you know, it's the simplest program. I don't know if it do anything. This is a room. So, uh, in the room editor window, you know, we have uh, settings. You, know, you can control the height and width of the room. And then I'll change these. Hopefully, this will fit on the monitor. And I'm going to set the background. You can have a uh, picture image background, and you can have a flat back color. Uh, we're actually going to build uh, Space Invaders uh, because I happen to like that game and it's simple enough that I can do it in the amount of time we have here and uh, it will allow me to, to show off a lot of the features and how to do it. Good. So this will be our, our group for uh, the game to run. And it has a black background and basically all there is to it for right now. Uh, I want to show you one other thing. Under settings here, uh, that's hidden in the uh, 
this creation code, this is where you can code uh, the game maker language to um, control what happens in the room if this person creates a such an event function here. Uh, other stuff, uh, I'm not going to put anything in the right now, but I'll do that real quick. Uh, so, other stuff in the resource tree that we have to build here uh, we have uh, objects, and we have sounds and sprites. And the other stuff is a little bit out of scope, I'm not going to deal with it. Uh, background and balance for scripts. Might do a script, but uh, all these other things are, are resources of different types of things And uh, so we'll talk about objects. I'll just bring you here. This is the, our first object, will be the thing that we made uh, for player output. And I preloaded for this game project, I preloaded a bunch of sprites. So, uh, sprites are graphic resources, and they can be animated, they can consist of multiple frames of bitmap data, uh, but also consist of metadata. Uh, they'll give you uh, the uh, variable or constant uh, data that they can take access in order to uh, draw a movie or the sprite around the uh, let me just select the uh, player sprite here, greater than the And so we have a player object, and I can put the player into my room. I can stop the player. And Run this. Now we have uh, a stub of a player object in the room, and you can't control it with the program. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, we'll go into the player editor. Uh, game Maker is event driven, so we have uh, all these objects that you define for uh, player. Power up, pick up, missiles, enemies, shoot at, terrain, all, all these different uh, objects. Uh, and each object has a different types of events uh, that are associated with that object. And so when an event happens in the game, the object that has a listener for that event will respond by the action. And so we're going to go to the right side of the number here. You have the action that's put on the other event that's put here. And we also have over on the far right, we have a, a couple of tabs that have uh, a visual representation of that. These are our drag and drop, so you can grab one and drag it down here. And so this is very simple for the brand new programming, if you've never done it before. And maybe a lot of younger people, they use Game Maker in school a lot. For, uh, so kids who aren't really going to be able to handle uh, syntax yet in the writing document, it's taking the computer. And it's also good for rapid prototyping if you're just wondering about something as a proof concept to see you know, this is a fun way to play a game. You can do that too. That's what I like uh, so I'm going to add an event here and click on the add event button. And we need to add the event. Let's do this. So uh, in, in, in the next app uh, window here, we have a bunch of different types of events that we can have. Uh, I'll just go over this briefly. We have uh, create and destroy. These are what happens when the object is first created and then if the object is destroyed. Uh, we have alarms. Uh, these are basically timers that you can set up and trigger to go off at a certain time. And then the event that the alarm that happens. Uh, 
You can have a step event, which is uh, every step in that main loop, um, step event fires, and whatever that you have in there are uh, performed. Collisions with uh, collisions are really important in games because you can have when you're getting things that when you uh, encounter an obstacle or uh, so you have collisions with other types of objects. And you can have a couple different ones uh, keyboard, uh, which this type of key is down, down, uh, press down. Uh, the key press, which uh, this is the event for, uh, it triggers just in the, in the first frame of, uh, or the first step in the game, when the key is actually pressed down. And after that, the key is held down, the key press and then the fire each mouse. And the key board of that uh, expires every step that the key is held down. I mean, you release when you, when you release the system out of fire. You also have the mouse stuff. Uh, basically, it's not going to do anything with the mouse, but it's not going to do anything with the mouse. It's like it's a very special problem. It's also like uh, uh, you can just take the type of mouse to enter a region or a collision mouse for the object. So let's uh, let's do a keyboard event for me. Give me your left arrow. And you have a number of different options for how we can handle the fact. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use the variables for the time. Uh, we didn't program them in, but uh, mainly there's a lot of built in variables that you don't have to. Program it makes it easier with all the stuff that we have to do. And the position of uh, the operation you have to find that here is the right one, which are corresponding to the part of the group. I'm going to say when you uh, press the left, you're going to make uh, variable x produced by the table. So that'll tell you if you pick up the left. And likewise, if you are the keyboard and right button, you're not. Now, if you build this, now, if we go up and enter the screen, we'll just choose God. So that's, that's kind of a problem. Because you can get lost if you're not paying attention to God. Uh, so we're going to fix that. Uh, we can do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, part of the previous part of the video is like, I'm not sure we can get all your this one here is the most common And I say uh, less than zero. And that's not. Now, if we only do this, this actually is not less than zero. So I reach the left edge of the screen, which is the side. It does, uh, but you're noticing. You kind of go off the edge almost halfway. And the reason for that is the uh, x y coordinates for this particular sprite are in the center. Right. That doesn't quite work. We can modify that. Um, that is x minus right here.
You know, so what I'm oh, I mean, that one, you know, you the right with the I mean, right. Oh, yeah, you're right. Good call. We have a variable for that, which is a good thing for now. Uh, uh, room work. So I don't have to know that I'm going to see how to take it wide. I can just put room work in the middle. So now we have a moving player, and we want to, so we want to be able to shoot stuff. So, um, we have to shoot this way, uh, basically. So I want to create an object for that. And this point, oh, When, uh, when you create the shot, you want to have an event and it's a set motion. You grab this moon uh, over here and in set direction you up and put the piece of And then what do you want to do for the player object now is give it an event so it can hit the uh, fire button. Uh, it will shoot that missile for, for creating you know, for a cheap play. Uh, we give it a keyboard. Space. And then we need to get an action to create new instance of um, our shot. We create a y equal negative sprite height. And we develop it the location of the player object. Now we shoot that's a lot of shots. Uh, that's because every every step in the game, every one thirty of the second, it's detecting that the space key is pressed down and it's creating a new instance of the shot. So uh, we want to fix that because in space creators you can't shoot that much. I think in the original space creators you don't shoot one at a time. So what we'll do uh, the, to that is to add a create event for player, and we're going to create a new variable. Uh, we'll call it can shoot, and we give it a value of false. Now, in GameMaker, which is weird, that I mentioned earlier, there's only two data types in GameMaker. There's numbers and there's strings. So false is actually a keyword that stands for zero, and true stands for one. And the way conditionals are evaluated in the game, they, they perform an evaluation, and if the result of that evaluation is 0.5 or higher, true is the result, and if it's less than 0.5, true is the result. You can do funny things with your math and uh, uh, you use them as sort of suitability if you want to. Some people do. Uh, I don't myself because I, I like to use. Uh, I, I like to Code is more expressive and clear, and even that is kind of odd, uh, so it's less understandable. But it's perfectly legitimate. You are that way you want. Uh, so now that we have the variable, I actually want to set the true of create. Uh, we will go back to our space bar event, and we'll say set the expression. And shoot. So now, if you can shoot, it'll create that instance of the shot. And then we need to change that. Um, <coughs> so what we'll do on for that is uh, we'll go to the shot object, and in this create event, we're going to reference the players and shoot. With an O player that that is uh, an accessor operation, so it allows you to bind the object and its variable. 
interest to be solved. So now, if we just ran this right now, I'd be able to shoot one time and it would change the hand, shoot the ball, and you would never be able to shoot again because nothing you said that is true. So what we want to do uh, with the shot is after we move out the screen, we don't care about it anymore and we want to destroy it. So we have an event for that under other events. We have outside room event. And then we use the destroy object. And before we destroy the object, we'll change the version and choose that truth. So now, if we did this in reverse order, the instance would destroy and then divert would be destroyed during the performance of that. The order of operation here is important. Uh, and this should allow us now to create shots uh, when the time. Uh, actually, let's not do that. Let's create a destroy event, because we have to destroy the shot when we have precise to the end, which we have created the objective. Uh, when we do it this way, it should be better. Uh, we, we use a story of that, and it looks like can't shoot the false here. That way, whether the shot goes off the screen or hits the enemy, when it gets destroyed, this uh, can't shoot variable will be changed by the truth. We can run that. And I'm only able to shoot one at a time. So that's where it is. And this is the way generally I work with game maker. I do little tiny bits of stuff and test it, and then I do a little bit more and test it and fix things as necessary. It's a lot easier to fix things if you only change a little bit because you know where the problem is. If you're looking for me before, and you just change something like what's broke. Um, game maker does not have really good um, testing features or debugging features. They have some, and they're very rudimentary. And if I had a week or so to talk about them, I could do that. But uh, for this talk, we'll just uh, I guess we'll leave that for the beginning of the that. And we'll get into it and show you guys a little bit more of uh, it. It was pretty good to stay with some of the time. So I have these two objects from the player, and the player shot. And I will uh, create a new object and call this. Uh, Omega. And we give them a strike for the first place of the So the invader, when we create it, we can start moving to the right. We will set motion to this here to give them a direction to the right. Do a two pixel curve stop. And we know that in space invaders, when you hit the edge of the screen, you reverse and you drop down row. So we'll do that when uh, there's a, an event called intercept boundary, which uh, just defines the, the actions that take place when the uh, object encounters the edge of the room. So the, the room has four boundaries, top, left, right, and bottom. And um, when you intersect the boundary of the room, this is on the fire. So the piece of this is we'll use another variable, uh, the built in given as a variable. And this is called uh, direction. We'll add 180 to the direction. And so the directions in the game maker are based off of 360 degree circle. Uh, zero degrees is to the right, and 180 would be to the left. And by adding it relative, we, each time it counters to the left or right edge, it's going to add 180 degrees to the current direction. So when it hits the left edge of the room, you'll add 180 to 180, and it'll wrap around by zero degrees and it's very much right. And we want to also drop it a row. So we'll say y equals strike height. 
Alright, so now we have the working invader. Uh, let's add a couple more to our room. Click in here. And you can see here when I'm clicking, it's actually placing it on this grid. And I don't really find that because basically it kind of plays on the grid. But if you want finer tuning with that, you can turn the grid off or adjust the snap to zero zero so that you can see and that will allow you to have a little bit finer control over the object that the face control. But this works pretty well for space readers and we're kind of in the And I've got eight there and space readers in the case of eleven in the row. Now if we play this That's not quite what we want. So each individual guy slides into the wall and turns backwards. So we want all of them. So the whole formation should reverse the smooth for the lead guy to the bench. So let me fix that. Uh, this is the first thing that's actually a little bit tricky. It's not as straightforward as just trying to draw a map. There is a command in Game Maker language called width. With uh, works in uh, in the case that if you want to do a action with every instance of the object you're calling the with on, and so that is what we we'll have to do here. So and in this set down here, we have these two options, or that is and we really want this to happen. With all of the code data, so to speak. Add this execute code action, and this will allow us to actually code the announcement. So, with code data, direction, let's see if we'll do it, apply, let's see if we'll do it. So what's actually happening here is when both of these guys hit the right edge of the wall at the same time, uh, they both have the width block that happens that reverses direction. And the direction is now being reversed twice. And so reversing twice just continues going to the right and therefore it's still in intersect boundary position to the right edge of the room. So it continues triggering that and then dropping a row each time. So they just go to the right and just drop off. That's not what we want. So how do we fix that? Well, what if we go back in here and we're going to need to create what's called a trigger. So if you go into the resources here, let's find triggers. Add a trigger called name it that edge. I have that is just my name for the variable, not a real name. So when you set that, 
should have uh, executed this code here. <coughs> We're going to add some configure that to the open data object. Copy this code here. Here. And we'll just set the variable that end to true. So what happens now is both uh, of the rows will intersect at the edge of the room. So both set at edge to true, and the at edge trigger will fire and do the reversal one time. So we don't know what that is. Uh, so we didn't reference the variable correctly. Uh, we need to. Uh, it's actually the same as a global variable. We don't really need every invader now that we have to go on at edge variable. We just want a global at edge. Uh, Oh, I see. Um, we didn't actually create the global variable until the interface boundary happened. So when the game's trying to run that first thing isn't at the edge of the room, that variable comes to find when it's, it's causing the trigger to blow up. So let's actually add that to our uh, game's creation code. Because that will make sure that it happens with the right hand So now we have two rows of invaders reversing. We can see the top. Everything looks good. And uh, what do we do now? We want to have more invaders. We uh, will create a new invader. Now, we could just code all the same stuff we just did over, but that's kind of wasteful with uh, what you wrote all that effort, right? So I'm going to make uh, use of the inheritance feature and give the parent uh, go to or own data to the invader object. And that way, all of the stuff that we just programmed in the invader will be inherited by the invader too. And uh, well, one other thing needs to be different. So uh, the point value for invader two should be different. Otherwise, the point is a little different. Uh, we'll add the create method here, and this is going to override the create method we set up for invader. So we need to fix that. Uh, there is a call event action that calls the parent event, and that way it just adds on uh, these other actions that we talked about. With the point be the twenty. So in the inherent event for the create, it will set. It will set uh, the, the motion and direction, and then it will set point be the ten, and then in the two and call it out, and then it's going to change point to ten to twenty. So we have two different point value invaders. 
And that was so easy we can do another one. So we'll duplicate this guy and we'll call it over to three. And we change this spray to Play that, so I'll work. And notice the sparks are going up as they like should. Supposedly up at the top there, there's a film that I'm playing for you. So that's all good. Um, what else do we want to do today? Uh, let's create the. Uh, well, the enemies need to be dangerous, right? So let's make a shot object to the enemy. Call this photo. Mm. 
So when I died there, you notice that I didn't respond. So you need to fix that. Um, I create a new object. Call this object and so when the object player causes the shot enemy, this is frame is just going to change it. This uh, perform events flag here will allow us to discover whether we want to invoke to create events and just transform it from the player to the player deck, or if we want to simply change it and leave it without calling to create events. I think we do want to create two call to create events. And in the create event, we're going to set a timer. Say, let's say one and a half seconds. So we'll do one point five times room speed. Room speed is a variable that uh, is equal to the number of steps that the room might have to do in a second. So that'll be one and a half seconds. After that alarm counts down to zero, we want to change it back to the player. There's a built-in game maker variable called lives. But we also want to uh, have that variable have a value to begin with because you can't add to the one for the binding value. So go back to your game and we'll add that and we'll add that. I decremented it. I changed the relative of I. Unless I missed it. Okay, so I used to set the sprite for the dead player, but it just disappeared there for the second and a half, and that's what's going on. So, let me fix that. I need to the sprite here. If I rerun this right now, what it will do is it will show like an animation of a left out for the player. Let's uh, also add a smoke to some things to create things. To create that. Connor, 
Can you comment is helpful because when you build up a complex uh, event, it has a lot of action in it. It's hard to tell sometimes what everything is for. So any kind of thing, nothing actually has the case here, but it, it is a way you can use to read it and remind you what you were trying to do there. When you go back to it later after you forgot, then you can add something to uh, remind you. Any other questions or comments? So now when you get hit by a shot, that's what happens, you just keep responding. And now we're in our lives less than zero, so nothing's happening. You can stay a dead player forever. So let's actually draw the light on the screen to be able to be handy. We want to have an object that handles over the stuff for us. Rather than the thing that you want to be an object that you already created. So let's create an object called controller. And this is going to be an invisible controller, but I do want to give it a sprite. So I put it in the game. Uh, I want it to be visible in the room editor, but not in the game. So I'm going to try to find a sprite, turn it invisible. Go to the game. Uh, and I'm going to be Now we can give this point to actions. Every time it draws, we give it to the second draw. Let's first put uh, the color of white. And we will use the test here on the full draw size. Okay, that's it. 
that. So score is a number, obviously, and we want to make it a string. So we have this string function that does that. <coughs> and now we have our store. And it's up at the top of the window, too. And there's, there's GNL that I tried to, to suppress, so we only have the one store that has the bottom of that. Let's continue and add a line of code to the bottom of the bottom. So we'll do dot. Down the bottom of y3, the size of y2, size 1, size 0, and it's got 1 in one. Uh, Now I'll write a negative 1. And that works. Uh, now, if we wanted to have the game actually end and do more stuff, uh, we could play the word game over or something like that. Do that. Uh, okay. Let's think about what we're going to do in a game of that over here. Um, oops, I go ahead. Oh, and then I'll clear shot. Oh, shot. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we have this code here. And we need to figure out what we're going to do in our house. Uh, <coughs> so we're going to stop all the ends. We're going to create a block. 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 Press R. 
Yeah, I'm going to call you. Yeah, I'm you know, using the same to your events earlier, uh, you have to get out of the way to do this thing. Uh, are you continuing with this, or are you going to do it at this point? Uh, there's more stuff I could do. Uh, I didn't program anything yet to reset the room when the last data is destroyed. I could do that. I could create some other chips. If there's something you guys have ever seen in the data, uh, periodically a mothership to define software to apply from the right to the room to the left. I can do that. Uh, or I can just answer questions if you have any. Mark. Unit testing. You were just, you were basically complaining that you don't have unit testing. Yes. Is there anything like JUnit for this? Unfortunately, no. Why not? Uh, nobody built it yet. I guess this is the main reason. Because a lot of that code would just say you can do it better. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, unit testing would be a wonderful thing. Uh, GameMaker is going through a lot of revision right now, and I don't see it happening in the next version that they're about to release. But they probably will do something eventually, I, I would think, if they would help. Uh, unfortunately, the maker of GameMaker uh, is a company called Yoda Games. They don't have a public roadmap for the project. And so I don't know if they really plan to or not. Uh, the other thing I'll say is uh, I became aware of this just a week ago, so I don't know a whole lot about it, but there is a open source project called Enigma, which is an effort to re-implement GameMaker and have it augmented in various ways. And it's supposed to be, its first goal would be a compatible with, with the stock GameMaker language and uh, runtime if possible. Uh, but it also allows you to do more advanced coding and it's probably allow you to do stuff like that uh, when it came to building it and it's not the that it's underway. So uh, Enigma is uh, an interesting project but it, it's, it's probably only about 75% of the Babylon would be at this point and so a lot of the Um, yeah, so you have this uh, pre-defined variable, but it uh, might talk about and so forth. And on the uh, same uh, reference? Yes, there is. Uh, you could repeat the question. Oh. Yeah, uh, the question was, uh, I, I was talking about some of the variables in DataMaker are built in, and some of them I was creating myself, and I wanted to know, is there a list of what is out there as far as those variables? And uh, I didn't mention it, but that's the uh, help menu is excellent in game maker. Uh, you can go into the and search uh, stuff. And uh, there's all kinds of information here. So this is the first place to go for that. Uh, There's, there's a lot of stuff in here. And there, there is an article in here that gives a really small variables, which ones are global, which ones belong to an object. There's variables for the price, for your objects, for your room, and you can use all of those very handy. So when you're trying to think of how you do stuff with, uh, you're trying to program with this for the first time, you've never done it before, uh, going to help and reading up on the language specification. Uh, learning about all these things and all these different functions and other things. It's the way you do it. Uh, GameMaker also has really excellent user support forms. Uh, they have a good community of GameMaker developers and they answer questions. So there's uh, a function on uh, a new game's, sorry, the, a forum on a video game's website where you can go and ask questions and there's one there's a chat room for well not a chat room, but that's a web forum for beginners and intermediate users and there's one for advanced users. So if you have a more advanced questions you can ask that and uh, I I realize there's a lot because in a year and a half I've been all day and a lot of questions Yeah.
the screen. It's not the right corner. So all these specs are, are, are possible in GameMaker. It's just that you have to get into it and learn um, a lot of different graphical techniques and things that you can do with sprites and help one thing stuff that you're really into. But it is there. It's it's capable of doing some really great stuff. And uh, it's a lot of fun to make games and you do it quickly. And if you are frustrated with the limitations of GameMaker, you can still use GameMaker as a direct prototyping platform and create a concept of something very quickly and figure out whether it's worth enough of the time to be able to get it a little bit more powerful. Um, so good for that. All right, well, I will be in the main room for a game at 1 o'clock and when we do something running. Uh, I'll answer any other questions you can come up with or if you want to continue to go to the Q&A for the remainder of the time here. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm just wondering, you mentioned that you Pretty much done now. I don't know what the audio system came out on this. I'm gonna stop this.